We're on problem 132. If the integer n is greater than 1, is n equal to 2? So they tell us that the integer n is greater than 1. And they ask us, is n equal to 2? Statement 1. n has exactly two positive factors. Exactly, exactly two pos factors. Well, that's certainly true of the number 2. But it's also true of any prime number. I mean, n could be 7. 7 only has two positive factors, 1 and 7. So it's true of any prime number. So this by itself isn't enough information to say there's definitely 2. Statement 2 tells us the difference of any two distinct positive factors of n is odd. This is interesting. The difference of any two Positive factors, so we're just dealing in the kind of the positive world. Positive factors of n is odd. So let's think about it. We were, you know, just thinking about statement one, we said, okay, what numbers have only two factors? Well, prime numbers only have two factors. So this is only this only tells us that n is prime. Right? Two is a prime number, but it's not the only prime number. But for most other prime numbers, what do we know about them? Well, they're they're odd, right? Most prime numbers are odd. Let's look at other than two, what are the other prime numbers? You go to three, you go to seven, you go to eleven, five. And let me ask you, why are they odd? Because if they were even, they would be divisible by two and they wouldn't be prime. So by definition, really, every prime number that's not two is not divisible by two because it's prime. And so they have to be odd numbers. So for any other prime number, the number is going to be 1 and itself. So you know, let's call that p. So the difference between the two numbers, and p is going to be an odd number, right? Every other prime number other than 2 is odd. So the difference between the two, p minus 1, if I take an odd number and I subtract 1 from it, I get an even number. I get an even number. That's true for any odd number. So every other prime number is odd and this this happens but they're saying that when i subtract the difference i get odd i get an odd number well the only number that that's true for is 2 cuz the factors of 2 are 1 and 2 and if i subtract 1 from 2 2 minus 1 is equal to 1 and that's because 2 is the only even prime number so you this the first statement says we have to be dealing with a prime number the second statement says well the number really has to be an even number if it is, if it's going to be prime let me think about the other two, the other, if, if statement two alone is enough. Difference of any two positive factors of n is odd, is odd. Any two positive factors of n. Now this alone doesn't help us because n could be, I don't know, it could be one and six, right? The difference between one and six is five, so it would satisfy this. So n could be six if we just took statement two. So we really need both. Statement one tells us that n is prime, and statement two tells us that n has to be even, right? That it has to be an even, uh, an even number. So frankly, the, there's there's only one prime even number, and that's two. So both statements together are necessary to answer this question. One thirty-three. One thirty-three. Every num every member of a certain club volunteers to contribute equally to the purchase price of a sixty dollar gift certificate. How many members does a club have? So we want to know. Let's call M, M for members. How many members does a club have? Question one: Each member's contribution is to be four dollars. So the members, so and let's see. It says they contribute equally to a purchase price. Okay. So the number of members times Every, and they say every member of a certain club. So not, they don't say some members. So M is the number of members, and they contribute equally, $4. And that's going to be equal to $60. So then you immediately know that you can solve for the number of members. There are 15 members of this club. Maybe I'm missing something. Statement two. If five club members fail to contribute, the share of each contributing member will increase by $2. OK. So that means that if I were to take the amount that five members were, were to contribute, so 
let's say that the contribution amount is C, right? So if we take if we take the amount that five members would contribute, so five times C and divide it by the remaining members, so divided by M minus five, that that would be that each contributing member will increase by two Right, so this is the amount that would have been contributed by those five people. Let me make sure that I'm not missing anything. And that is equal to sixty dollars. That is going to be equal to two dollars, right? So this is the amount that those five con members would have contributed. If they don't contribute it, it's going to have to be divided by the other members. So however members there are, minus five. And that is going to be, when you divide the amount divided by who, who has to pay for it, is $2 per leftover member. And we also know that the members times the contribution for member if everyone pays is going to be equal to $60. That they gave us in the problem statement, right? That M members of a, of are going to contribute equally, and they're going to end up with $60. So actually, we have two linear equations and two unknowns. So two al statement two alone is actually sufficient to solve this problem. And if this doesn't look like a linear equation, you can just multiply both sides by m minus 5, and you get 5c is equal to 2m minus 10. And now this looks a lot more like a linear equation. And actually, well, actually, this isn't a complete linear equation, but let me let me solve it just to just to make the point clear for you. So if I were to say that C, this isn't a linear equation, so I shouldn't have said that. C is equal to 60 over M. If C is equal to 60 over M, so then this returns to 5 times 60, so 300 over M is equal to 2M minus 10. And then you are left with what? Multiply both sides by m. You get 300 is equal to 2m squared minus 10m. Divide both sides by 2. You get 150 is equal to m squared minus 10m. And then subtract 150 from both sides. You get m squared minus 10m minus 150 is equal to 0. And then let me see if I can if I can just do this. See, just by factoring it, minus 150, let's see, 30, 30 times, 30 times 5, no, that's not good, 15 times 10. So if I do m minus 15 times, no, that doesn't work, 15, 25, and 6, well, I know one of the answers already, I know it's 15. M minus 15 times M plus 10. Oh, actually, I just realized what my mistake was. I went from this step to this step. So I divided both sides by 2. So 300 went to 150. 2M squared went to, this had to be 5M. That's my mistake, 5M. M squared minus 5M minus 150. So that's M minus 15 times M plus 10 is equal to 0. So that tells us that M is equal to 15 or Minus 10. So this was clearly not a. This is actually a quadratic equation, and we know that the members can't be negative, right? There's a positive number of members, so statement two alone is enough information to know that there are exactly 15 members in this club. Next problem that had me stumped there because I have my careless mistake there for a second. Next problem, and I am okay. Problem 134. 34. So that last one, I don't know if I just said it, E statement alone is sufficient. So problem 134, if m and n are positive integers, positive integers is a square root of n minus m, an integer. So m and n are positive integers. OK, so they tell us, statement 1, they say n is greater than m plus 15. Well, I, you know, this n is greater than n plus 15. So if n is exactly 16 greater than m, this tells, this tells us that n, this is another way of saying that n minus m is greater than 15, 
right? That tells us that what's under the denominator is greater than 15. Well, if what's under the denominator is 16, then it is an integer. But if it's 17, which also meets this requirement, it's not an integer. So this isn't enough information by itself. Statement 2 says n, n is equal to m times m plus 1, which is the same thing as m squared plus m. So if we substitute that into this equation, we get the square root of m squared plus m plus m minus m, right? m squared, that, that's m times m plus 1. It's m squared plus m. And this minus m is right there. So that cancels out, and we're just left with the square root of m squared, which is going to be equal to m which is an integer. So statement 2 alone is sufficient to say that this state this it would be an integer as long as n is equal to m times m plus 1. And I've run out of time. See you in the next video.